This is a blog that I have written for this Christmas season entitled entitled Natalis Christus in Bethlehem Judea The Birth of Christ in Bethlehem of Judea a blog by Dr Oliver Phillips There is no indication that Jesus was actually born on December 25th In fact the possibility is that he was born in April or in May that can be determined on the basis that Luke's account is built around shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Luke 2 and 8. December 25th was much too cold and inclement for sheep to be sleeping in the fields. Normally, shepherds didn't take their flocks into the field until April. The selection of that date represented a political and social coup on the part of the early church. Unbeknown to many Christians today, the period between December 21st, the winter, winter solstice, and December 30 was the period of greatest celebration and worship of the sun, both in the Mithraic festivals of Egypt and in Rome. This observance reached its high point on December 25th when the birthdays of at least five ancient gods were celebrated. Conversely, Christians decided to counter this pagan festival by worshipping the birthday of their god, Jesus, and they so astounded the pagan celebrations that December 25th became a major Christian holiday, Holy Day. In 336 AD, December 25th was changed in the Roman calendar from Natalis Solis Inviti, the birth of the sun, S-U-N of righteousness, to Natalis Christus in Bethlehem, Judea, the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. Of Judea. Thus, the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness was eclipsed by the sun, S-O-N, of righteousness. Hallelujah. By the latter part of the 4th century, the name given to December 25th was Christ's Mass, highlighting the idea that this was a day for consecrating the birth of Jesus in worship and in the celebration of the Eucharist. As early as the 5th century, Christmas music and carols, liturgies and customs began to be created. The name for December 25th evolved into Christmas by the 11th century. Whereas Christmas, as a religious holy day, concentrated upon the worship of the Christ child, much of the festivals of the formerly pagan solstice carried over from the Christian celebration of Christmas. Thus, for example, the giving of gifts was initially part of the Roman celebration of the solstice. Germany contributed the evergreen tree as a symbol of everlasting life and its decorations come from the hanging of the body parts of conquered enemies upon these trees. The Druids gave their sacred mistletoe under which the ill received the kiss of healing from a young virgin. The holly representing the crown of thorns with drops of blood came from England. The Yule log, receiving into the flames the hatreds and distrust of the past year, came from Scandinavia, along with candles burning in the windows to light the way of the Christ child. So one can say that whereas early Christianity succeeded at baptizing the pagan holidays into the worship of Christ, the pagans rebaptized Christmas by diverting it into play, sport, 
and finally into commercialism. The two major events of the Christian year, Christmas and Easter, are the celebrations around which Christendom is centered. One marks the birth of our Lord, the other his resurrection. One celebrates the incarnation of our God upon the earth, the other celebrates our atonement and rebirth through his death and resurrection. Both celebrate the transformational love of God for humanity as God acts to give God's Son for the redemption and liberation of the world. Enter Prophet Jeremiah. My Old Testament exegetical work at Howard University School of Divinity centered on the Prophet Jeremiah. The presence of shepherds was critical and prophetic. Jeremiah contended that the Davidic monarchy had an obligation under God of establishing and maintaining justice throughout the nation, but particularly in defending the rights of those who were most economically and politically vulnerable in that society, i.e. the widows, orphans, and aliens. If they were faithful in their discharge of that obligation, then both they and their nation would be blessed by God. But if they did not, but rather acted to build their own power, wealth, and domination at the people's expense, they would be under the judgment of God and eventually the people. Jeremiah states accordingly that about the political system. He says, It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them, so I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Later on, Jeremiah writes, I will raise up shepherds over Judah who will shepherd them and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed nor shall any be missing says the Lord in verse 4. What Jeremiah is saying is that the kings have not looked after or cared for the people and therefore they will be looked after by God. But whereas those who lead Israel's political, economic, and religious systems will be called to account and punished for their abandonment and even manipulation of the people for the system's own ends, God will shepherd the people so that they will be looked after, mustered, counted, and therefore not missing. Thus, Jeremiah makes it clear that whereas Israel's political, economic, and religious leaders are now illegitimate because they have been unfaithful to the exercise of their office given to them by God, their legitimate king, Jehovah, Yahweh, will be faithful to the people, providing them with a kind of political, economic, and spiritual care that will enable them to have a future and a hope Jeremiah 29 11. but since the nation's leaders will only end up betraying the people and not practicing God's justice what will God do to redeem the situation Jeremiah states two things first God promises, he promises that God will raise up legitimate leaders to shepherd my people and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed. God will replace illegitimate leaders like Zedekiah with legitimate leaders and God will do this through God's second action. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, 
Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is righteous. God's primary action will be to raise up a righteous branch of the lineage of David. Because he will be that righteous branch, he will reign as king and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. With his reign, Judah and Israel will live again as one nation and will live in security. The name of this righteous branch will be the Lord is righteousness. May we welcome the shepherds this Christmas. Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. May the Church of Jesus Christ welcome the shepherds at this Christmas. God bless you. Happy New Year.